keep going keep going whatever you're doing like i'm i'm really i've been i've been like i get like i said i get obsessed very easy and things and i tried to hunt the like what is the key to success or the key to to become better in whatever craft you're doing if it's dancing if it's uh, training if it's uh, podcasting whatever it is is just reps is just repetitions just keep on going Hey, all right. So I am now on the line with a Mr. Sebastian Cruz. You are a, an, an author, a dancer, as well as a fitness coach. You're also in the opera of uh, Be Fit and Sensual, which is a dance festival focused on improving your dance skills as well as your fitness training. You also have a YouTube channel, which is uh, more so dance specific training. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> um, uh, so what you told me you were. Born in Sweden, but currently live in Norway, or the other way around. <laughs> First of all, thank you for the introduction. It was a great yeah. introduction. Yeah, I got it made me happy. Um, I'm half Swedish, half Cape Verdean. I'm born and raised in Sweden, but I live in Spain right now. But I oh, used okay, to, okay. but I used to live in Norway. Okay, okay, okay. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. You have um, you know, your your accolades. I mean, you're doing a lot right now, man. Yeah, I mean, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. We're trying to expand as fast and as as good and as much as possible. That's awesome, man. I, I wanna, I wanna start this out, man. I'm I'm very curious to hear about your growing up in Sweden, man. You know, what was that like for you? So yeah, like I'm I'm born and raised in Sweden. Nineties kid, born ninety one. Um. It was good, man. It was good. I had some. I had. I had, I had great memories and I had a lot of friends growing up. Uh, but at the same time, being uh, the only mixed race kid in in my or well, the only black kid in in my town, because I'm from. I'm not from. I'm from Gothenburg, but I'm from outside of Gothenburg. So where when I was growing up, there we were fifteen thousand people in that town, uh, and me being one of the only, if not the only, black kid in school, uh, there were a lot of racism, but. The, yeah, it's the way it is, <laughs> but it was uh, like it was. I had I had a great youth. A lot of like I got a lot of sports. My family, especially when it came to like my dancing and my entrepreneurial spirit. So I had a great time growing up there. Okay, okay. I'm curious, man. You know, I don't really, I don't really know much about Sweden, man. So so tell me this, man. You know, what were what were some of your childhood hobbies growing up as a child? Uh, fighting. I used to do fighting. I used to do taekwondo, uh, kickboxing. Um, we have something in Sweden that we call floorball, which is basically ice hockey without skates inside. <laughs> uh, and you're and you're, you're chasing a snowball. It's very popular in Sweden. And where I'm from, uh, where the city I'm from, uh, one of my mentors actually, whose name is uh, John Inge, he's one of the founders of that sport. Like and really like one of the OGs when it comes to that sport, right? Mm -hmm. So it, they always joke around with me. It's like, it's, uh, it's unpopular to not play floorball. And I was like the only kid who didn't play floorball. Like I was terrible. I stopped at an early age. <laughs> so I did, uh, I did fighting until I was 17. And then I found dancing around that time. And then it was just a, a, like a total 180, a total switch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what you said was it was it strictly taekwondo for you, or was it something else? I said it's taekwondo and uh, kickboxing. Hey, okay, man. And so black belt or what? What did you say? But a black belt or or what? No, I did. Uh, I went all the way to uh, to green. Uh, not to green. What am I saying? To red. So I was a year away from. I was a uh, half a year, half year away, a half a year, a year away from black. But then, uh, then I found dance, so it just took a total turn. So just my, all my priorities changed at that time. I understand, man. So were you competing at all? Yeah, man, I was competing. At the, like at a young age, I was like in my weight class. So I was, I was tall. Like I'm a tall guy already from since I was a kid. So the, we had um, my in my category and like so the highest weights or like the highest, yeah, the highest weight and the highest ranking under black belt. I was best in Sweden for a year. That's awesome, Swedish, man. Swedish champion. That's, that's <laughs> awesome, man. So, so I mean, I definitely want to 
And I want to hear more about your childhood and I want to get into, you know, your dancing life, man. But tell me this real quick, man. Um, you know, growing up fighting, you know, you have to be very dedicated to it. Man. You know, you have to put some real work into it, man. What are some things that you may have learned from, you know, your background in fighting, man, that you, what has it taught you that you're able to translate to your everyday life? You understand me? Yeah, definitely. Um, discipline, 100% discipline. 100% because the Taekwondo is a, is a, is a Korean uh, military art form. So every, like we, we, you bow for everything. Like you bow when you enter the room, you bow when you're going to go to the toilet, you bow when you're going to talk to your teacher, whatever it is. So you always like, so it's a, a lot to do with discipline and just like repetitions, 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 repetitions. So I would say that one is for sure. And then one thing I really understood like later that uh, winners respect the process. So if you want to be a bad, if you want to be a black belt, you just you can't go from white to black. You gotta be go yellow and then green and then blue and then red and then if you are lucky, you might end up being black. And then you do all the belts in between. So really, to respect the process of going from a beginner all the way to uh, to to the pros. And then there are like there's levels to this game, right? Because once you black belt, it doesn't mean you're there. Because then there's like nine or I think it's nine or seven degrees of black belt also. Right, right, right. I understand that, man. I definitely understand that, man. So, and so, tell me this, man. You know, you um, you got into fighting at an early age. Is that from your parents? Like, what, what did your parents do? So, my mom was actually a dancer. My mom was actually a dancer. She was she was early in like one of the first Swedes, or at least the first generation going from Sweden over to to America. She used to live in Chicago doing jazz dance. Um, so she always like she always pushed me in in looking at dance at least. So I was I was always exposed to it like as a young kid. Even though I wanted to fight, I was always exposed to it. And then my dad was uh, my dad used to do uh, boxing and karate. So I think I think it's got to be some some mix from there. And then also like growing up like like I said like growing up in that in that uh, in that village where from like I was scared about it. like I was really scared when I was a kid. Like I was really scared of like. Because we, we had racism, but we had Nazis where I was from. Like real, real like neo-Nazis, I think you guys call it that. Yeah. So I was, I was scared a lot. So I was a lot scared. Like I wanted to, to be able to defend myself. That's crazy, bro. You had to grow with neo-Nazis. That's only something, something like I've, I've heard about, read about, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's it was, crazy. It was the real, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like it, it's, I, I laugh when I, when, I, when I talk about it, but it's like I, don't, I, I, lack, uh, I lack expression. Because it's crazy. Like even for me, saying it out loud, it's like, yeah, like. Those are actual memories. Like it's not That's stories I'm making crazy. up. That's actual yeah. memories. Let me ask you this, man. Let me ask you. I'm very curious to hear about this, man. Um, you know, what was that household like growing with, you know, a Cape Verdean parent and, and a and a Swedish parent? Well, what was that household like? <laughs> so my mom and dad never lived together. Uh, like, like as far as I can remember. But I, I always had great connection with my dad and my mom, right? But I, I spent more time with my mom. But that that led me to to uh, like I had both sides of the fence. Like as I, I literally saw both sides of the fence. Like I could one one weekend it wouldn't be unusual for me to to go and party with my Swedish friends in in a in a in a nice villa with an inside pool and everything. And then the other day or like the end of that day. Or end of that weekend, I would have spent it with my with my dad in in the in the neighborhoods of Gothenburg and be in a basement and they're playing Cape Verde music and everybody dancing until six in the morning. So I get I saw both sides of the fence, right? So I was very blessed on having on having both of that. But it also came with like, yeah, I mean you you mixed like you we we used to say we we used to joke about it and say like you were I was too white for the black kids and too 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 black for the white kids. So it's like I was always in the middle of everything uh, for for some years until I discovered it's like, yeah, this this really doesn't matter. Does that makes sense. So, I mm. Come here. Hey, if you could even like and subscribe for the channel and share with the people, that'd be amazing. That makes sense. So, it definitely does, but I, I want I'm curious to hear about that man because that you know that's um that's a world different than mine, man. So so yeah, mm. tell me this, man. Where you are currently in your life, man, can you put into words how growing up as a, you know, a mixed, a mixed uh, child, how did that affect you, man? Put that in words? Um, 
I was searching, like I was always searching, like I tried to find, I tried to find mentors, like I was always early on, on trying to find mentors or like role models that could guide me. So, and yeah, man, it was tough. Like I had real, like, um, not existential crisis, but in the sense of like, I didn't really know who I was. Like I, I didn't know how to, to, to move in that space of being, wait, so I, I can't, who am I? That, that question. So, um, but I was, yeah, like I was early with finding mentors and I had, um, I was, I, I was, I was, I was lucky to have a computer early, like uh, with like the modem and everything. So I was always like searching and that's how I found reggae. Like I'm, I'm deep into reggae until today, like I'm deep, deep into reggae. So then I saw like, oh wait, so Bob Marley, like he was actually mixed, like, oh my God, like that, that's similar to me. And it's like, oh wait, Malcolm, Malcolm X had red hair. It's like, oh shit, my mom has red hair. So it's like, I saw all of these things and then like, trying to create a persona out of that and I, I think i think that was the that was like a there were years i was lost like I, I was lost lost for years like trying to navigate i understand that man let, let me ask you this man a follow-up then man you know for because we're all alike man you know humans we all we all have similar things man so so for someone else man who who may feel lost, man, or who may mm-hmm. also be biracial, you know, and they're, and they're trying to find themselves, man. Could you, do you have any words of wisdom, advice to that person who's soul searching, you know? Yeah, so for, for me, man, reggae was a big thing. Like, reggae was a big thing. And, it's, and it still is. Like, it still is in my life. Like, I really try to operate from a, from, a, from a perspective of love. Like, everything. I try to, like, there is positivity. Like, I, that's, that's my, I try to force that to be my default. And if you lost, man, like, just remember you're not alone, first of all. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of us out there. <laughs> and, and search. Search for, search, for, um, search for guidance and actually do what they tell you to do. Like, that was the, that was the key for me. Like, there is a lot of, there's a saying, like, knowledge is power. Like, I, I, I really don't believe that that's true. I believe that applied knowledge is power. Because if you only have this knowledge, you're sitting on it and you just don't do nothing with it. Like really go learn, listen to, listen to, like for me, for example, like I listen to reggae music, I keep saying, like that was a, a big thing for me. Uh, and then I applied it. So it's like, okay, this is how they are, this is how they are thinking and that they're saying that that creates happiness. Like, okay, cool, let me, let me try that. Let me try that, you know what I mean? And, uh, and read, like find mentors. My mom was like early with, with giving me books. Like she forced books on me. And I didn't read anything. Like I didn't read anything until I was 21. I think I read my first book when I was 21. And she, like I had all of these books from like... So, so not, not, not even school, you were reading at school? <laughs> I, I, was, I wasn't a good student. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say like it is. <laughs> let's just be honest with that one. <laughs> Get you right there instead, man. So yeah, so... um. I guess, you know, so one thing, try and learn something, but I guess um, maybe connect with something. You said music was a big, like, anchor for you, maybe. So maybe yeah. uh, being able to connect with something is also reading something, trying to learn something new. Yeah, and, and like, and be curious. Be curious and really, like, really understand on a, on a deeper level that you are you. Like, there is no, you are the perfect version of you. Like, I went through some really dark years in my, in my, in my young, grown-up age, like, between 22 to 23, like 22, 24, with deep depression and anxiety. And, and it really took me soul searching to find like, wait, okay, so this is who I am. Like no matter where I'm, where I'm at, if I'm, if I'm black or if I'm white, like on an existential level, like that really doesn't matter. Like that really doesn't matter. The only difference is just melatonin and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like, yeah, but... I'm this because of blah, 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 blah. Like, no, don't, don't make it that complicated. I understand you, bro. I definitely understand you, man. So, uh, so you're telling me, you know, growing up in Sweden and, and you get into, um, you know, kickboxing and everything. Let me ask you this real quick, man. For, for both of your parents, you know, I guess both of those households, you already spoke on a little bit, but how important was, you know, music growing up for you? Was that Huge. everything for you? Yeah, bro. That was, yeah, it was everything. It was everything. It was everything. Uh, like I remember, I have like early memories of, of me and my dad because I used to spend the weekends at my dad, and for and for some years, like even every other weekend. So every time I met my dad, it was something special. So I remember like even him. We we're driving in the car, like listening to Bob Marley records. Like that was like my best thing ever. 
Like that was that was like I have deep anchored memories from sitting in the car, like sitting shotgun next to my dad and like listening to like um the reggae reggae do the reggae do the reggae reggae do the reggae reggae like listen, she's listening to Marley tracks and and like and the same like my mom bringing me to to and this is before I danced like this is years and years before I danced because my mom was a teacher so she used to have kids in her school that were dancing so she we used to go and watch them watch them perform and I just remember like whoa this is this is sick and like watching like you got served and stomp the yard you know what I mean like and that that's way before way before the, I, I even looked into dancing like I was just I just had that interest and that, I guess that's from from yeah from my parents like I can't see any yeah, other okay. way around it no, I understand that right there that and because so, so- like sorry like we from I'm from Cabo right like I'm from Cap Verde so I have, we ha- I have memories of like, um, so we have Kizomba, which is a traditional, like our folk dance, right? And go a- dance. Yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. I, I, do, I love Kizomba, man. I, I love yeah. Kizomba, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and we dance it in Cabo also. Like that's the, like that's the, one of the traditional dances. There. So it's Kizomba and Funana. But that, those two are the, like the big things that they are, we are dancing over there. So um so my even if my dad is not the best dancer, <laughs> there were still parties at home. Like there were still parties at home. Or, like going with my uncle, going to seeing his friends and everybody's dancing kizomba, or like learning from my from my from my grandma or like yeah. So there were there were always music and movement around me. Even if I didn't awesome. understand it at that time, you know what I mean? So so that's awesome. So so you actually got to, you know, I guess grow up and meet your dad's side of the family that came very inside you actually grew up with them and everything uh, with, with my dad's side you mean your dad's side of the family that came very inside you actually got to i guess grow up and interact with them 100 100 like okay. even if like even if i was even if i was never i wasn't it wasn't like i didn't learn kizomba until like a few years ago like in a grown-up age but when i saw it this the first time in a grown-up age i'm like yeah but uh, come on man like i used to do this with my grandma like this easy i got this <laughs> and, t- and then then someone told me it's like yeah no there is actual structure to this it's like ah uh-huh. oh, yeah. oh, okay got it got it <laughs> <laughs> i guess you bro so 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 tell me this to me see it you know growing up and everything what happens after you graduate high school? You know, do you decide to go to college? Do you decide to become a full-time fighter? Like, like what are your... <laughs> so I, uh, so we would graduate here when we were around 18. And um, I started dancing when I was 17. So I started dancing pretty late, right? And at that time, around 18, I had like fully left martial arts and uh, I just wanted to be a dancer. And my, one of my closest friends at the time, who is not a dancer, um, or like he's my best friend, and he, we went to Australia together. So we moved to Australia for six months. So we spent three weeks, like a month, or a month in Thailand, and then we went to Australia where I lived for uh, six months. And uh, yeah, just trying to make it there, like trying to dance and trying to just, again, like you're 19, like you basically just learn how to walk, right? Like you would, you know, like, yeah, I have no idea about life. I'm there, I'm there trying to, trying to find myself, like to, to, to create myself more, like, and, and navigate around it. I mean, I, in, I live in Melbourne and for six months after spending the summer working at McDonald's to just collect money, because to go to Australia, you needed at that time, I'm not sure if it's the same anymore, but at that time, at least, you needed, like, a, a, a certain amount of money to get the visa. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, so, yeah, we go there and just trying to, trying to live, <laughs> trying to make it work. And then so stay for about six months, and then I go back home to, to Sweden because I, I really miss dancing. I really miss dancing. Like, I really missed my crew. Like, I had a crew at that time. We all lived in Gothenburg, so I'm going back to Sweden. And once I'm back home, everybody had moved to Norway because we got uh, we merged with another crew. So uh, the name of our crew originally was Lefties, and the other crew from the Norwegian group, uh, or like the French people that already lived in Norway, they were Four Sound. So when we merged, we created Left Sound. Okay. Uh, so I'm moving back to Sweden, and like. Where are all my friends? Like, I moved for you guys. Like, I moved for dancing. And then everybody had moved to Norway. So I decided to move to Norway at that time. Uh, no work, no nothing. I lived at a friend's sofa for, for like two months. Started working in kindergarten over there. And after two and a half months, something like that, uh, all of my crew just moved in together. 
So we were like, yeah, bro, we were, we were between eight and 12 people, depending on the time, living in a house together. And everybody's just, people were producing music over there. You saw, I remember coming home from work and it's like, there you have in the kitchen, Appy sitting, producing, like doing beats, uh, Brian and Lee's downstairs DJing, Stu is training, popping, like guess guys up there doing something else. It's like everybody was there and everybody was like deep into hip hop. Awesome, man. Yeah, man, it, it was, it's amazing. It's absolutely, it was absolutely amazing, man. Well, so hold on. I, I want to hear about that, man. So, but let me ask you this first, going back a little bit. Mm-hmm. What made you transition? What made you stop, you know, um, fighting and got and got into dancing? What what happened? What was that catalyst? Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, I remember my first dance class, bro. So I'm 17. I'm 17 at the time, and. Uh, my friends, my, my friends started dancing before me, like a good friend of mine, and he's and he's like, "Yo, I just found a, I I just found like a girl there, blah blah blah, and like our teacher, she's so fucking hot, this and this, and bro, you gotta come." So I'm like, "I perfect," because and, and in fighting, there's no girls, <laughs> so I go there, and it's like, "Wait, what is happening?" <laughs> Yeah, I'm staying right here. So like that was that was that, that was definitely like I would lie if I, if I if I didn't tell you that I was like the the start of everything. What was the what was your first dance class? Uh, hip hop new style, I think the name what of the class was. So so let me ask you this, man. Like I still don't know, man. Um, you know how big is the hip hop scene in, in Sweden and Norway, man? Is it big? I would say pretty big, like for being in such a small country, and 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 it, it's leveled. Like, yeah, there is actual level. There is actual level. It's not only, like, yeah, like, a few people dancing. Like, the people that are dancing are good. And, and especially at that time, we had a strong community. Like, so I come from Gothenburg, and we had a school. Or we have a school until today that absolutely changed uh, the life or, or the, the entire generation shifted in hip-hop when they opened. And it's called Twisted Feet Dance Academy in Gothenburg. And, um, and they were really pushing the foundation of hip hop. So not only like, okay, go and do MTV style or do a new style or, or some, some whatever the name of the class was, an isolation class, they were really focused on like the foundations of hip hop and brought the like p- actual pioneers like Sugar Pop and Link and Popping Pete. So I was exposed to, to real hip hop from the early ages. And, um, and a, a lot of us are still dancing, like a lot of us are still dancing. Um, so I'm really proud to be from, 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 from that side of, of, um, of hip hop and really see the real thing. And then in Oslo, Norway, we had Circle Dance Academy and Soups Dance and Soul Session. And it's the same thing there. Like we, we were really, because Scandinavia, I believe early understood like, okay, we really don't have any idea about this let's bring the original source to teach us about what is the original source. Does that make sense? I think I understand you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, um, you know, I guess at what point, at what point did you feel, I guess, like, more of the need to like, go full-time with this, you know? Like, what, what, did, once you got into it, did you automatically, I want to do this full-time for the rest of my life, or was there a point where, like, <sighs> That's a good question, bro. Um, I was early, like, I understood like in an early age that like, school wasn't for me. Like, I, that wasn't an attractive thing for me. Like, I didn't believe, I didn't believe what they was teaching me. Like, I didn't believe the history they was teaching me. I didn't believe the knowledge was important. And and once I found dancing, it was like, boom, perfect. This is it. I'm gonna be the best. And I have that from home. Like, I have that. Uh, I get obsessed with things easily. Easily, easily. And I see it in my mom, I see it in my sisters, I see it in my brothers. So it's like I become really obsessed with things. So it's the same when I when I went into fighting. It's like I'm gonna be the best. Like I'm just gonna outwork everyone. And same thing came with dancing. Because I wasn't talented in dancing. Like I was terrible from the beginning. Oh my days. I still have I still have videos from like our first freestyles. <laughs> But uh, but because I found a home, like Twisted Feet wasn't only uh, because they were so hip hop oriented. They really focused on community, like they wanted to build a strong community, and they really and they really did it. 
Like they, they really did it. So um, I found a home there. So when I did it, it was like, all right, perfect. This is it. I'm going to be a dancer. Fuck everything else. I, I need school less than ever right now. Yeah. Let, me just, let me just find this. Let me just find a way to, to survive here. So I would say like pretty early, like pretty early age, yeah. like, because I went from, from, so like the first semester I took one class uh, per week and then the second semester I took like 12, you know what I mean? Like nine or 12, something like that, like a okay. crazy amount. Okay. So I was so, pretty so, determined. Yeah, t- tell me, tell me this day, man. Um, I'm very curious to hear about your beginner stage, you know, in hip hop dancing, man. What, what was that like? You kind of already spoke on it. <laughs> terrible like i didn't understand beat like i didn't understand there was some things called like i was a tall guy i didn't understand there were like some things that was called like beats i, I like i didn't understand music at all uh but again like i was so curious like i was so curious and i really came with like like questions to my teachers and like okay how are you guys because i wanted to be a free i wanted to be a battle dancer i wanted to be a, a real battle dancer like that was my thing like that was the cool thing like i thought because uh, because I was so ignorant as a kid, right? Or like not ignorant, but like trying to trying to navigate. So it's mm-hmm. like I I do freestyle, I do real dancing, and then you guys you do choreography. Like you don't really you're not really dancers. So like I, I really like for some years like I was really operating right like that, which is so sad, it's so sad. Like I missed out so much at a young age, okay, thinking like okay, that. Okay. Uh, but then again, like the the longer I start dancing, and the more I realize this, like I okay, like I said in the beginning, there's levels to this game, and, and that is so far from the truth. Um, but yeah, man, I, I was curious. I was super curious and talking to everyone, asking questions like, okay, how do you guys train? Like, how do you think when you're practicing? And I guess because I came from Taekwondo, like I wanted to break it down because in Taekwondo, every technique has a, has a, has a structure. So like the hand is here, it's not here. Like this is correct, this is wrong. So I wanted to find that inside of dancing and just had him coming with a lot of questions. Like a lot, a lot of questions. And again, like I became obsessed fast. And I understood like the more I practice, the more, the better I get and faster and the more I can enjoy this. So once I did, once I, once I get like, once I decided in my brain that, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a dancer. Like, I, like we danced everywhere. Like we were those kids, like we danced at the, especially me and my crew, like we were known for that. Me and my, uh, my best friend, Brian, <laughs> like we danced everywhere. Like there were no, and not like small dancing while waiting for the bus, like, headphones on hoodie on dropping solos like while waiting for the bus like <laughs> crumping inside of the bus going into a shopping mall doing battles That's crazy man <laughs> we, were, we were just kids like we were just kick we say kickish in swedish like kickish kids like trying to trying to navigate like i, I think that like trying to find your way like and expressing like it's art end of the day right so you're just trying to express yourself inside of this art form Oh, man, I definitely understand that, man. I definitely understand yeah, it. Yeah, so, but that 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 obsession, I would say, like I became obsessed. That's that's the only way to express it. And so, Luis, so is that <clears throat> obsession? Is that what kept you going in those stages? You know, when you were maybe a little bit um, upset at your talent level, you you know? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And I thought it was so cool. Like I remember. I remember practice popping, like I remember going and like trying to understand how to how to actually pop and like so it's like wait so this is correct and and I'm there and trying like like I'm con- like I'm contracting my entire elbow like yeah, the Caesar <laughs> yeah like <laughs> yeah bro so this is like you they're trying and it's like you you see how you're making progress and because like I had some encouraging teachers at the time it's like wow, man, you're doing great, you're doing great, like, keep going, keep going, like, you're going to get there, and, and like, they were really pushing, and they saw that I wanted, so they, um, they, and, I, I, like, calling them teachers would be an insult, like, they were mentors for us, they were real mentors, um, so, like, they were in, all, all the time encouraging, of like, yo, keep going, keep going, keep going, like, I see you, and they gave you good feedback, and so, yeah, I th- I th- that, that, that obsession has a, has a, Definitely think, life. Yeah, I think that's also I think you speak to another point, man. Just um you know, I guess in, in your early stages and pretty much in any stage, you know, how important your 
support system is. You know, you have people out there supporting you, motivating you, man. It makes it more likely to succeed. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, like, when it came to... So I was never, like... Uh, I wanted to be a battle dancer, and I did, and I did battles in the early age, uh, in the early, in my early dance age. But even there, it was like I didn't get, I felt I didn't get the support of like, oh man, you're doing great in battles. Uh, but I, I, I got so that was never my outlet. That didn't become my outlet. Like my outlet became just being on stage because I was modeling at the same time. From age twenty to yeah to until now, I was modeling a lot. So that like that became my thing, and waves became my thing because every time I did waves, I saw that people were like whoa. So the more support I got there, like at my, I don't know if this is making sense, but I think uh, I just want to stretch like how important it is to to in dance community, like no matter the age. And it's, I see it now more more than ever because I'm 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 doing online coaching, right? Mm -hmm. And and I see and I hear people like grown ups, like most of them, like all of my clients are over thirty. I don't like now. Nah. I have few that are under thirty, but most of them are over thirty, and I just hear it. They're like telling these stories of like, I went out dancing, and a guy commented on me on my dancing because it was bad, and I feel like I want to stop. And like, it's just so important, man. I uh, definitely, man. Like, I remember talking to this lady, and she was telling me um, how. Like, kind of like what you said, though, man, you know, one person can say one remark to you and that can like kind of shatter your dreams or something like that, you know? Yeah. Or, or that, that, that that same situation gets a positive feedback, man. It could change mm. your whole outlook on it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And then, and then that like to, to tie the whole sack together, right, from what I said earlier, like applied knowledge is power. Like I remember listening to 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 like early motivational speeches of like Will Smith and and Denzel and I remember hearing them talking about like people are going to criticize you and then you just got to keep on moving forward so if I didn't know that applied knowledge was power I would just like all of these negative talks or like negative yeah negativity around people because again I'm not on now at the, at this stage in life I'm not only the one of the only black kids living in in my uh, town. I'm also the only guy who is dancing. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm double exposed at that time. Yeah. So, so like, if, if you don't understand the power of applied knowledge and, like, to really stay focused on your goal, then you're just going to get shattered. It's just the way it is, especially when it comes to art. Let me ask you this, man. I'm curious to know, um, you know, I guess, how did the idea of blending you know physical fitness and dancing how did that come about man and and, and oh yeah just, uh. so um i was i'm 22 when the 22 23 when this story starts and i'm i don't know what's happening in my body something just it's just a shift happening in my body until today i can't explain it and um, we're living in, in the house with left sound. Everything is perfect. My life is amazing. I'm living with my friends. Uh, like I, I, I model, I'm dancing, life is good. And I just start getting panic attacks. I'm just gonna start getting anxiety attacks. And I have no idea, like until today, I can't navigate to why, where they're coming from. I have no idea, it just happens in my life. So, um, um, so yeah, like if you ever, I don't know, like, it, it's it's hard for me. To, it's still hard for me to talk about it. But like a pan an a panic anxiety attack, like the only thing you want to do at that moment is to kill yourself. That's the best way to explain it. There's no other way. Like you just want it to end, by any means. Like you just want it to end. And I could have like up to six a day at sometimes. Like it was dark, like I seen some dark spaces. And and then again, like I'm, I'm, just, I decided one. And we eating bad. Like I'm not taking care of my body. Like I'm smoking cigarettes at the time. I'm, I'm working for three different jobs, trying to get some money. Like I'm just not taking care of my body. I have no idea what I'm doing on health, on a health uh, level. So I start to go to the gym. I start to like getting more and more into this lifestyle. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm. I've, Long story short, like I move out from Left Sound House um, or Factory X, as we called it, 
Uh, so I move out there, I move into another place with, um, where I meet uh, a guy called uh, Robin. And he's a Thai boxer and a personal trainer at the time. And uh, we live together and I'm still like fighting with anxiety and everything, but it, it, it's getting a little bit better. But at that time, at that time, I'm um, like, at that time again, like I'm obsessed, but this time with training. Like as I even said to my friends, like I'm out, like I'm going to stop dancing. I have nothing to do with dancing anymore. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to train and be a businessman. Um, but I was associating health and dancing. No, sorry, I was associating health and uh, fitness and well-being. Like I, I saw that, that connection. Like the more I trained, the better I took care of my body, the better I felt, like the less anxiety I had, like the better human I became. Again, like I started fi finding myself. I go to Spain with one of my friends uh, at the time. And um, we're going to go to a bachata congress. But uh, I have no idea what bachata is. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Zero, zero, zero. Like it's a dance, one, two, three, four, touch. One, two, three, four, touch, and that's it. Uh, and I'm like, I'm the guy at that moment. Like, I'm, I'm modeling. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ripped. Are you feeling yourself? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm the guy. I'm the guy at that moment. So I come and I and I meet this girl, and she's called her name is Judith. And um, long story short, she became my girlfriend. <laughs> and I and at that time, I still live with that personal trainer, and he's really pushing me. He's like, "Bro, you would be the perfect personal trainer. Like, you're happy. You're all the time training. Why don't you start making money with it?" And they had and Judith is one of the creators of. Uh, bachata sensual which is a, uh, a fusion of the of uh, of bachata basically is she, uh, is she from the states no nah, she's she's from cadiz okay uh, i'm thinking all right so sure enough she's from cadiz uh spain so uh so sh she moves in with me and then then all of this journey starts like i'm studying at the norwegian school of sports science i live with this uh, dance uh, phenomenon uh, and I start to dance one more time. I come back into dancing. I start to travel with her. Um, and then I, like, I slowly like, merge because I'm so into fighting at the time also, like, as, as always. Like, my fighting interest never stopped. It never stopped. It just kept on growing. The only thing is that I didn't go and take classes. And so then it's like, okay, I want something that... So I saw these physical trainers for, for fighters, and they were doing fighting specific. And then, like, wait, what? Like, so you're telling me in every dance style there is, or in every sport, in every sport on the planet, in every sport on the planet, there is specific training for that sport. And then I started searching, like, okay, is there anything like dance specific, dance specific, dance specific? And at that time, there were nothing, like, nothing existed. There were few researches being done, but that was on ballet dancers. And me coming from hip hop, like I couldn't, I can't, until today I can't relate to it. Until today I read those research and it's like that has nothing to do with my dance. Uh, it obviously yes. does, it obviously does, it obviously does. Okay. But, uh, but at the same time, no. It's, uh, it's still two different dance styles, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So, uh, so yeah, I, just, I started studying. And the more I started studying, the more, because uh, I, I, I went to, like I went to a respective school. I went to, like I said, like the Norwegian School of Sports Science and studied fitness there. And, and then because I was living with Judith and I was living with a personal trainer, I think like those two worlds just blended in and just became that, that mixture. And that's why we call it Be Fit and Sensual, because we, are, we, were, we were targeting um, Bachata Sensual dancers. But the method I'm using and the, the method I'm developing is, uh, we call it dance specific training. Okay, all right. And so, and so, when did you start that, man? What year was that? Uh, four. I guess when did you like get, yeah, get serious about it? Yeah, four years ago. Yeah, I was at four years. I started training professional dancers around five years ago, uh, a little bit more. But four years ago was when we decided to like, you know what? Like, let's do this festival. Let's go full out and let's see if we if there is a if we could create this market. Like, let's see if dancers right. respond to it. 
So tell me this, man. I'm very curious to hear, man. Tell me about that first year, man, where you try and, you know, you go all in, man. What was that first year like for you? <laughs> crazy, crazy. So we, we go to Spain. Like, we, we live in Norway this time. Me and Judith, we're living in, in Norway this time. So we, um, we find a hotel in a, in, in, in a city here in Spain. And um, we go down. We, we look how we see how it looks. And we're like, okay, let's, let's try to do it. And because I, I at that time I had traveled uh, with Korke. Korke is the is the um, the dance partner of Judith. So I had been traveling together with them, doing videos and like looking and like trying to yeah, just doing my thing, like teaching teaching body isolation and different classes like that while traveling with them. So I saw that like wait, they there is a community like this real community with with an elder scene of people that are supporting this costs like crazy so it's like wow how can i is there a way for me to 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 really give back and really make an impact on dancing um and i wanted something to i wanted something where i could train be with my friends dance and do videos so it's like if i can do that and make money at the same time that would be amazing like so we try that we 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 get the hotel we booked a hotel, so now we have a hotel all of a sudden with, with three huge studios. Um, we, we can get up to 600 people or up to 500 people there, and we have no artist and we have no promotion. And there's like, it's less than a year, and I've never worked with this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I, I've, I've been barely teaching uh, dance-specific training. Like, I'm, I'm just in, like understanding how to like okay i have a vision and just trying to like sculpture it so we were nervous like well like super nervous but still confident like i was very i'm always been very confident because it's such an obvious thing for me like it's such an obvious thing and like it's nothing new it's nothing new that dancers are athletes i just feel that i'm i'm I I'm, definitely I'm, man I'm one of the first just pointing and screaming. It's like, it's there. It's like, look at it. We all have it. It's right there. It's been there for Dude. all these years. So, yeah, real quick, I want to say, man, I, I interviewed some, uh, you know, professional full-time dancers, and you said it, man, like, they are, you know, professional athletes, man. What they do with their bodies day in and day out. Yeah, like, yeah definitely. And they have, they, have, they, have, they have to maintain that to 100%. bring the best performance to the stage. 100%, man. And, and then again, like, again, uh, like, there's too many... There were just too many things like pointing me in this direction, like just like just thing. Like I never thought about it, but my first dance class in, in our first dance class, we used to do sit ups. Like I remember having like physical training in like a hip hop class, and I never thought about it until today. But like, and and then I came to this to Bashata and the Latin salsa community, like the Latin community, and I saw nothing of it. So it's like, wait, what is happening? Um, so it's, I th I, like the more the more I think about it, and the and the, the for for the more time I've done it, I just see how everything like, you know, when the stars align. <laughs> like, I get you. I definitely understand that, man. So, so you know, you start all this, man. Um, I guess let me ask you this, man. You know, what are what what are your goals for this, man? Is it just you know, to create something that you could do full time, something that you love, or you know, what are your goals? How would you define success for you know, be fit and sensual? Right. So, I'm 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 doing this full time. I'm doing it full time. I've been doing it full time awesome. for the last uh, for the last two years. I've been doing this full time, and I before I measured success, I believe in the amount of money I made. I would say before I measured success in the amount of money I made, but it's, I spent it, um, I spent it, I just came back from, from Cabo, from Cap Verde, and I spent it five weeks there. So I really understood how little money I need to be happy. Like I really understood how, how like me, myself, Sebastian, and uh, like how little money I really uh, need to be happy. So I can't count that as success anymore. So I, I'm, uh, I wanna, it's a brave goal and I'm very, uh, I, wanna, I wanna impact 10 million people's lives together with fitness and dancing. That's success for me. The m amount of people I impact is not the amount, I don't get motivated with money. 
I don't, I'm not, because uh, then I wouldn't do all of these things that I'm doing for free. Like we're doing so much things for free. Like the majority of my business is free things I'm giving out. So everything from the book, from the workouts, from the from fat loss challenges. I, I, I measure it in the amount of people I impact. Let me, I, I don't want to, I don't want to like skip over this because I'm really curious, man, about this. You said earlier, man, you, um, you know, you suffered from these panic attacks, man. Did you, you say you still don't know where, where that came from? I don't know, man. Like I, it can be, no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. What, like, what about, what, what about like any, anything that, you know, triggers it maybe? That, that contribute. Yeah. Uh, unhealthy living. Just okay. unhealthy living, yeah, unhealthy living. Just yes. smoking cigarettes, uh, like staying up late, not sleeping enough, taking terrible, just living on a terrible diet, terrible. Because we didn't have any money, like we did, we weren't, we weren't rich, we were never rich dancers, you know, <laughs> like like that. The modeling helped. The modeling, modeling saved me. There were months like modeling saved me, like that's for sure. Uh, and uh, so yeah, we were like yeah, twelve people living in a house, is taking like yeah, like a, I think I think that has a lot to do with it. Nah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so I, I was gonna say um, and I, I guess I asked you that really, man. Um, you said that you know what you found to remedy the situation was you know becoming more active, living a more healthy lifestyle. I mm -hmm. guess would you use that same advice to someone else who might be also you know, experiencing those panic attacks, those anxiety attacks as well. Yeah. You think yeah. That, that could be a remedy? 100%, man, 100%. Meditation, uh, taking care of your body, uh, breathing. I'm big on breathing. I'm big, big on breathing. Uh, just breathing exercises and uh, health and nutrition, for sure. And then, like, don't be scared of reaching out. Like, don't, there is no fame here. Like, I'm, I, 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 there is no fame. You're looking at zero fame. I don't, that is, it's not my aim. It's not what I, it's not, I don't want to. It's nothing I aim for. If it comes, oh, okay. It wasn't what I wanted. So reach out, like, please, please reach out. Like, you're not alone in this. And you, and the thing is that you think you are alone. Because I remember feeling that also. Like, I remember listening to interviews like this and like, yeah, whatever, whatever, bro. You can never relate to what I'm, what I'm going through. And it's true. But there is keys, like there is universal keys for health and well-being. So don't deny them. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this real quick, man. Um, you know, for going back to, you know, be fit and sensual, man. Um, you know, I guess what can people expect to experience if they attend you know, your festival or one of your classes, man? Uh, say that again. I said, um, what can what can people expect if they attend, you know, your festival or one of your classes for BFIT Essential? If you come in as a student and understand and come in with an open mind, you will change the way you're looking at dancing and you will change the way you're approaching uh, training for us dancers. That's the that's the goal with everything. And and it's not only a, a way of like okay you need to be fit like you need to look as a as a bodybuilder fitness person that's not what i'm talking about and it's on a, and if you come in you open your ears you come in with an open mind you will change the way your uh, your training and you will leave as a better dancer like i'm 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 confident in it because and and the confidence doesn't come from my ego the confidence comes from the people that have been reaching out or my clients, like there is, we have too many success stories right now. There is too many dancers saying, uh, this works. Like what you're doing made me become a better dancer. I'm a better dancer because of this mythology. Or I'm stronger on the dance floor because of this mythology. So I may sound, I may come off as cocky and it's not my, and it's not what I want. <laughs> like it's not my intention. It's just I'm confident in what I'm teaching. And because it's also science based. I don't pick I don't pick things out from a hat and hopla it works. It's like now uh, we're backing this up with actual science. And so, and so are you are you um I guess more so aimed towards bachata or are you kind of can this 
can you benefit in, in all the answers sir in, in all the answers my first my 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 proudest moment as a trainer is uh, together with uh, a good friend of mine called Marcio Ratinho. And when, when he started, when we started working out together, his knees was just torn, like it was destroyed. He gave up on his dance career at that moment. And one thing that we, one thing that we, we, we made sure that he's, he's, he got his stamina back, his strength back, uh, his knees and his knees and his flexibility back. And, and his mind, and his mind, like we never underestimate the power of the mind when it comes to a dancer. A lot of people love to forget that. Like this is not only a sport of physicality, like this is a mental sport more than anything, because you got to perform. So the, my, one of my proudest moments is when Marcio is going to, uh, he comes to the semifinal in the World Championship of Hip Hop, Just the Boo, we call it. In hip hop, uh, in battle, oh, yeah. very powerful. That's very popular. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very popular. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So Marcy was there, man. Like one of my clients from 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 nothing from, from not. I'm not gonna say nothing. That would be an insult. But from being in a very low stage in uh, in his career because of injury, and then going all the way out over there in less than a year. Uh, so yeah, my point is that it's I'm I'm focused now on on. There's a lot of bachata dancers because. I'm in that community, but me personally, it will always look towards hip hop, always, 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 always. And at the same time, now I'm collaborating with uh, a ballet dancer. We're doing an experiment, so a lot of new things coming up. We're doing an, an, an actual experiment to come together with 12 different uh, ballet dancers in Spain. So, uh, dance. Yeah, okay, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. That's really awesome, man. Um, you know, I guess, man, at this point, Sebastian, man, I really want to, I want to thank you, man, for taking time out today to talk to me, man. Yo, thank you for reaching out, man. It means a lot. We need more. Oh, of course, we man. We need more, more, more people to do what you're doing. This is, I love what you're doing. <laughs> but you're, you're leading by the front line. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really do, man. How many interviews um, do you have? Oh, man. So, to keep it 100, man, I think you'll probably be like maybe 106, 107. Yeah, I just started in February, man. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Keep <laughs> on going, Lord. Like if you keep on going like this, man, this is how everybody starts. Like this is how everybody starts. You sit in, you sit in, in the hallway, like you said. Like, man, I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Yeah, I mean, you tell you said it yourself, but you live in a house with you know we say almost twenty people, eight to twelve people, man. Just trying yeah, to trying to try to make it, man. Just trying, man, and 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 that's the thing, like. That's how you succeed. You're trying, like you're. That I think. That, I think what people forget is that everybody is trying. Like when you get you get a kid, you have no idea what to do. I'm just gonna try. Like I don't know what this is. Like okay, you want to do an interview with me? I remember my first interview, man. I have no idea. I'm I'm there trying. Like I'm gonna try to write the book. I'm gonna do my best and see how people respond. I'm gonna try to do a, a festival that is focusing equally as much on fitness and dancing. Nobody has ever, ever done that before. It didn't exist before. 380 people came the first year. Oh, man, we're, awesome. we're, we're, there, we're there trying. And, and, and that's the way it is, man. Uh, I think you, you kind of spoke on it earlier too, man. You said, um, you know, you couldn't measure success by, you know, a monetary, monetary means, man. And I, I think that kind of, that kind of speaks, it sounds kind of like cliche for Everybody says, man, but like, I think happiness is so much more important than that, man. Yeah. If you go, if you go wake up every day and like be happy with what you do, man. Oh, I don't think you could put a price on that. The hundred percent not, and especially if you've been in a, if you if you've been where I've been, and and been seeing, like these dark spaces. There is it's just you can't measure it. Like it's it's un it's un uh, there is no price to it. And I heard a powerful quote from the author of the book his name is keith cummings and he's the author of the book um the road less stupid and he said that pleasure comes from satisfying your senses and happiness comes from gratitude and on the other side you have success is getting what you want but fulfillment is giving what you got and i really think like that fulfillment 
aspect is so much bigger. Like giving what you want, giving what you got and giving back and that having gratitude. Like I wake up happy. Like I wake up happy, bro. I wake up smiling. Like I, I can't. I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful, man. Like there was a trainer. There was a trainer today, actually. Oh, a few days ago. She wrote, she wrote to me on Instagram. And she's like, yo, you, you really inspired me on what you're doing. Uh, thank you. No more. And like, I'm so grateful for that. Like, it means so much. Like, I can, I live in Spain. I'm not from here. I don't speak the language. I live here and I'm, and I'm doing what I want. Like, I'm so grateful. And I really believe that happiness comes from there. Like, if you, if, and again, on a deeper level, like not on a, on a shallow level, like you're saying, like Shane, like happiness, there's no price to it. Oh man, I do definitely, yeah. And I, I say just like um, I'm a little bit different, man, because I got I have a nine to five right now, you know, man. So like <laughs> I'm gonna keep it hundred. I don't I don't wake up excited every morning, man. You know, having that alarm clock go off. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of idolize, you know, you you at least are able to put all your energy towards something you're truly passionate about, right? At now, now, now. Right. Okay. you know what I mean. But again, like, how how old are you? Yo, I'll, I'll be 28 this year, man. Man, like, a few years ago, I was at McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like, never forget, like... And then, again, applied knowledge is power. Look at JC. JC released his first album when he was 26. And it's JC we're talking about. You know what I mean? The, the guy who invented... The guy who, who opened the first McDonald's, he opened it when he was 52. So it's like... And I get it, bro. Like, two years ago, I had a... A, a year ago, I had a 9-to-5. And I didn't, it's, and even though, like, I, it's not that I woke up happy every day, but that vision ex- excited me. Yeah. That end vision excited me. And, like, you have your podcast, man. Like, Lord knows where, Lord knows where this will be in a few years from now. <laughs> even a few months, you know? Yeah, yeah, you're right about that, man. You're right. You're right. You're definitely right, man. I really, um, I really appreciate those words of encouragement, Sebastian, man. <laughs> For hey, sure. so uh, hey, yeah. tell me this real quick, man. Tell me, um, what are some of your upcoming goals? You know, what do you have going on in your life? Uh, I'm going to on, yeah. What's going on in my life? Um, where are we? Which month we are in? September. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my I got my surgery coming up. I got my yeah. surgery coming. I do a knee surgery again on Monday. Uh, what's what's happening, man? What you got going on? What happened? Just just dancers' life, just stupid things like jumping, just pretending you can be uh, crumping while you are eighteen and jumping on your knees and pretending that you don't need uh, that you don't need knee pads. Just never warming up as a hip hop dancer. Uh, strength training, pretending I know what I'm doing before I, I understood that there is actual technique behind it, uh, and just me being me. Me pretending I'm Superman. <laughs> this is Superman complex. Uh, so I, I got um, this is my second this is my second surgery within a year, unfortunately. Um, what is the way it is? Like it, it doesn't bother my mind. Like I tell you, it doesn't bother my mind. It happens. I can't do anything about it. Like I'm I'm listening to a lot of Stoic philosophy lately. Um, I'm I'm taking I'm finishing a, a online course I'm taking. Of, of a guy called Tim Grover. He, he was uh, Michael Jordan's uh, personal trainer for 15 years. He also trained Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade. So I'm taking that education. We are... Uh, what more is happening, man? Like, uh, just a lot of new things with, B, like with, with the company. Like, just a lot of new things. Like We're doing that science experiment I told you about. I'm very excited about that. We are expanding uh, our online platform that's called uh, Dancers Bootcamp Online. We're expanding that, expanding that, adding new courses, and uh, it's just constantly happening stuff. So it's hard to like. I go to Marbella for a, I have a business meeting in Marbella a few days from now. Uh, then I go to Finland for a seminar that I'm attending to. And I go. So it's just a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff happening. I'm very excited. Very excited about the future. Awesome, man. That's awesome, nah. man. Real quick, real quick. Tell me this, man. Um, you know, how can people get in contact with you? How can they reach out to you? Sebastian underscore B fit on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, on um, yeah, I would say that Sebastian underscore B fit or B fit essential on any platform. Okay, 
Okay, okay, sure enough, sure enough, man. So, yeah, man, like I said, Sebastian, man, I really, I really do appreciate you taking time to talk to me, man. Hey, bro, it means a lot. Thank you for, thank you for taking your time. Uh, I know you got a lot going on. We tried to, we tried to sync this, this talk together for a few weeks. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, glad, I'm, just, I'm glad and honored to be part of it, and especially, if it, especially since it's the early stages of your, of your, hey, of hey, your hey. Years, It means a lot, man. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, keep on going. Oh man, I got you, bro. I got you, man. So well, real quick, man, you know, like I said, thank you so much. Um any anything you wanna like say before we close this out, man? Any last words? Uh just a few last words. Uh keep going. Keep going. Whatever you're doing. Like I'm I'm really I've been I've been like I get like I said, I get obsessed very easy and things. And I tried to hunt the like what is the key to success or the key to to become better in whatever craft you're doing if it's dancing if it's uh, training if it's uh, podcasting whatever it is it's just reps it's just repetitions just keep on going nobody knows what they are doing nobody knows keep on going and you're not alone like don't be scared about reaching out this would never happen if we did if you didn't reach out you would never have your podcast if you did like your your business is based your whole business model is based on you reaching out like that's what it's all about like don't be scared of asking for help and if you find someone that puts pressure on you don't crack don't crack on the pressure pressure is a privilege go for yours advance and um, yeah, let's let's get it together. Like I believe in in our community. Like I I strongly believe in our community and our craft. Like let's let's fucking get it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it, bro. <laughs> um, I think that's a great way to wrap up this episode of the Two Fifty Podcast. Awesome, bro. Thank you again. Thank hey. you, for having me. I'm honored. It means a lot. Hey. And yeah, bro. Hey, another but love, Sebastian, man. Thank you so much, man. Much love, much love. Bro. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, if you made it this far to all the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So if you find no value in this, and I, I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I, I truly want to, you know, just, uh, give value and content to, to the dance community. Um, so please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up, because to be a hundred percent honest with you, um, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So, um, to be able to interact with, you know, the dance community, it means the world to me because it. It gives me feedback and it lets me know, you know, what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know, what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because you know that feedback just helps me improve. So um, please comment uh, as well. You know, please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but. You know, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, you know, I want to I want to take you on this journey of the Two Love Feet podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So, once again, thank you so much.